Hello and welcome to Handmade Originals, the first Handmade Originals of the new year, that's 2023 and a happy new year to you all. Old subscribers, new subscribers, if it's your first time, welcome and welcome back if you've been here before. Right, as you'll know if you've been before, Handmade Originals is the YouTube channel where I tackle a whole variety of projects in the hope of inspiring you or giving you confidence to have a go yourself. After all, if I can do it, how difficult can it be? But we're in January of 2023. Now, did you know that January, the month of January, the name of January, is named after Janus, the Roman god. Let me show you a picture of him. Now Janus, as you can see, here he is, um, has two heads, or two faces to be fair, on one head, um, facing forwards and backwards. And he is the um, god, the Roman god, of doorways. So at the end of 2022 and the beginning of 2023, he is looking back to the previous year and forward to the year ahead. Um, and I want to do the same thing today, because I am a Roman god, no, um, I want to do the same thing today because before you can move forward, um, I think you need to really make sure you've cleared up whatever detritus there is from the year behind. Otherwise it tends to creep up on you. Other like <gasps> a monkey on your back. Okay, that's a bit of nonsense. Right, um, so, so in order to clear the decks and move forward with nothing on our back or no frogs that we have to eat, etc, etc, um, so that we can move forward with clarity and purpose without anything undone, unfinished jobs hanging on to us saying, well, you didn't do this, did you? So I'm going to just take three examples, because I do have quite a few different things I didn't finish last year, three examples of jobs which I keep thinking I should get that done and I didn't and I'm just fed up being nagged by them so you may not or probably you probably won't have the same jobs obviously because you'd have in a different house and you're a different person but you'll you'll know what I mean when I show you the sort of thing right let's begin first job this is a window to our bedroom and probably for over a year this whoops has been loose and it is the simplest of jobs but I just haven't got round to doing it the problem is every morning when I open the window or close it that happens um, and then I sort of think oh why haven't I done that it's going to be such a simple job the thing is these inner voices that are telling you why haven't you done it are you lazy are you stupid blah 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 well that's what I hear in my head anyway um, these inner voices are so destructive and before you've even started your day, you're telling yourself off. So rather than starting on a sort of enthusiastic and intentional day, you're already dragging yourself down thinking, well, why didn't you do that? And reprimanding yourself for not having completed something, which frankly is a very small job and you can probably do it in five minutes. Right, enough of that negative talk. I'm going to tackle this and get it done and then move forward without ever being rebuked internally again. So what do you need to get the job done? First of all, you need something to get off the old lumps of glue. Um, I would suggest you could use a screwdriver, you could use a paint scraper, you could possibly use a chisel, though everyone throws their hands up in horror if you use a chisel for anything other than wood. Um, or you could even use maybe a credit card if you don't have any tools at all. Then you need, number two, some new glue. And this is wood and that is plastic. So you need a glue that will adhere to both wood and plastic. And then you need to hold it like this so that it sticks. And because I've left this for so long, I don't know if you can see here, it's sort of pinging. So I actually need two heavy objects to hold that like that. And then it's done. So really, I look at it now and think, why did I take so long? Right, I've actually prepared for this beforehand. So I'm going to use a paint scraper to get these off. And literally, they'll just come off, I hope. Oh yes, quite easily, that's one. There it is, that little blob of glue. I'm going to keep doing these and then I'll come back to you. And here we are. So this is um, four minutes later. <laughs> 
I'm embarrassed to tell you it took four minutes to get the glue off and I did worry a bit about this for here because I thought well I can't do it because of the handle but sometimes you know <laughs> you just have to think all you have to do is move it's, it's like Mohammed and the mountain instead of trying to work around the handle move the handle out of the way of the bit you're working on anyway I've got all these off now um, and I've checked on the other surface which is here where there were some tiny bits of glue which I've now also got off and which I've scattered all over the bedroom carpet. No, I haven't. I've been carefully picking them up and putting them in the bin. I'm just having a final look here. And then I've, I've checked all my different glues that I've got downstairs and the one I'm going to use is actually this one. It's not an advert for it, it's just because this is no more nails because it says um, good for skirting boards, dado rails, worktops, architraves, blah, blah, blah. But it also says it covers wood, metal, glass, ceramics, brick, concrete, cork, and UPVC. This is, that's UPVC. This is some sort of rubbery business. Um, and this is, this is wood. So I'm going to just put some blobs on here. And then I've got two bookends, which I'm going to use to hold it in place. Let's hope this hasn't completely dried up. Oh no, it seems quite good. Right. Now, I think it's quite useful to ask yourself why it's taking you so long to get round to these jobs which take so little time. Well, I have a bigger conversation with myself about it anyway. Um, and I think that the answer is, in this case, for this particular job, um, I wasn't sure which glue to use because I knew only one component was wood and the other was some sort of rubbery plastic. So I was sort of dithering about, oh, do I have to go out and get some glue and then it probably, can I be bothered to go out? Do I have time to go out and buy some glue? Whereas actually, when I went through my sort of glue drawer, because yes, I do have one, I found I had this, which would be absolutely perfect. So really, that was all about, do I have the right tools? Um, and you just have to, it, basically, you have to rehearse what you're going to do to work out what you need and then get it. And, you know, you might find, as I did, that you've already got it or something suitable, or you just go out and get it. it it's really not a big deal. And here we are now, it's, it's drying. So that's taken, what well, we're getting all the things together and doing the video, which takes a bit, bit of extra time as well, nine minutes. So for the sake of nine minutes, every morning for the last year, I've been getting up thinking, why haven't you done that? Why haven't you done that? I'm making my, telling myself off before I've even started the day. No longer. Tomorrow morning I shall get up and say, well done. And that's a much nicer way to start the day, especially in the new year. This is job number two. This is our bathroom where we've got a lovely double sink unit. And it used to be a floating unit, which means it was just fixed to the wall and it had no legs. So it was lovely. Um, but Last year, I think it may even have been over a year ago, which is really, really embarrassing to tell you, um, it started to sort of lean and there was a crack at the back here. So I sort of used to lay awake at night thinking, oh my goodness, is, is it actually going to fall off the wall? Are all the pipes going to come? Are they going to burst? Are we going to, am I going to come in one morning and find this on the floor and then water everywhere cascading down through the house? So yeah, that was a bit of a, a bit of a worry. So what I did was I managed, I had some wood, just cut it to the right length and I just shoved these under, they're just literally, you know, they're holding it up. Um, but obviously they don't go with anything, <laughs> not particularly attractive. And so far, I think, I, yeah, I think it probably is about a year, I have thought to myself, oh, well, I'll replace those. And I even went out and I bought, because you can buy apparently, here we are, some new legs. And I bought these ones because, look, they match these handles that we have. So I thought, well, that will look quite nice. So I've, I've placed them underneath. Look, here's one. <laughs> have I attached the new legs? No, of course I haven't. So that's another job I'm going to do. And why is it 
I haven't done this job. I haven't done this job because if you look at the bottom of these feet where they are adjustable, they get, so actually they're brilliant for things like this because you can, this floor is not terribly even, but you can adjust the feet so that they support the unit and make it absolutely level. But the reason I haven't done this is because these, I haven't gone ahead, is because I've been dithering about these. These are black and we don't have any black in the bathroom. We have, I don't know if you can see, these tiles here and the sort of shades of grey and a little bit browny so I was thinking well maybe I'll spray it sort of a graphite colour and that will merge in better with the tiles but the fact of the matter is we're probably never going to look at them at the, the bottom of them again once they're in place so probably don't need to do them at all but so that I can prove to myself I haven't been utterly wasting, <laughs> wasting my time I'm going to take this off downstairs I'm going to tape round here, I'm going to spray the bottom of this, I've got four of these and I really only probably need three, and so I'll, have, I'll spray the spare one just to see what it looks like, and if it looks magnificent and tremendously different, so much better than the black one, I'll spray all of them and use those, or I'll just use the ones with the black legs and I might just put this one at the back for a bit of extra support. Right, spray paint, here we come. Here you have the result of the spraying. So this is the original black and this is the grey. If I can just hold them a bit closer to the tiles. Personally, I'm not think it's close actually, but I think I prefer the grey. So I'm kind of glad I delayed the decision of <laughs> that wasn't the reason I was doing it. I was just dithering dithering about in a cul-de-sac of indecision. So I'm going to get all of the black ones now and spray them this colour and then when they're on the floor we'll probably never ever ever look at them this closely again. But decision made and that's a weight of relief actually. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, while I'm here um, I just want to sort out what other tools or equipment I'm going to need to finish this job now. <laughs> That sounds extraordinary as a thing to be able to say at this juncture since it's sat there for over a year. Right, so these legs have, this plate goes underneath here and they have four holes into which you put a screw going upwards. So in order to um, work out where the screw is going to be and to help the screw screw into this bottom panel, um, you have a point <laughs> a pointy thing which my mother and I call a bodger but actually I think it's called a bradle where you put the point up from underneath like this and you tap it with a hammer which just gives you a guide hole for the screw and the length of the screw will be the thickness of this under panel plus the thickness of the plate minus perhaps one or two millimetres because you want it to go through the plate, you want it to go into that panel but you don't want it kind of sticking through like that on the other side. Right, I will measure all of that and I will come back when these are all sprayed, beautiful graphite grey. Right, so I've now sprayed all of the uh, metallic legs. I'm going to take the old leg out and do the hokey cokey and um, put the, <laughs> literally put the other legs in um, and the way I'm going to do this so I'm going to just I've, I've taken out the little bit of uh, cork which I wedged under there just to make it a tight fit I've already put the silvery legs underneath just just standing freestyle like like this to take the weight of the unit because obviously I don't want it falling on top of me <laughs> <laughs> while I'm doing all the screwing. Right, so this is the leg coming out. Right, it's tight fit. Right, that's it. The unit's still there. So that one can go in the shed. I've got another project in mind for that. And then I'm going to put this in here. So I'm going to make it, so these are adjustable legs which are brilliant, so you can make them shorter or longer. So I'm going to make that shorter so I can slide it under. I'm not going to make it right at the front, like that. I want to take it back a little bit and then I'll tighten up the bottom and uh, here we go. <laughs> Just to prove I'm actually going to do this. This is the bodger, which I was telling you about. I've got a hammer. And I've 
I'm going to just knock a few holes in. <laughs> I could be playing Christmas tunes on this, couldn't I? just sufficient to catch the tip of the screw so that it doesn't skitter about drop in your face. I cannot believe after all this time that I'm actually finally doing this. <laughs> I don't know why, I do know why it's taken so long. The reason this has taken so long is because I just couldn't make my mind up about A, whether or not I preferred the metal to the wood, but B, and I guess since I sort of decided I would go with the metal, um, couldn't make my mind up whether or not to spray the black feet grey on Right, now that's in. Oops! <laughs> I'm stuck. I think I'm going to have to slide. <laughs> right, I'm going to tighten those up and then I'm going to um, get my husband to actually come here and take the weight of this while I extend these uh, legs a little bit so that the weight of it is definitely on the legs and not sort of hanging off the wall as it was before. Um, and then I can sleep easy, safe in the knowledge that this is never going to fall off the wall and we're going to have floods, etc., disaster, um, and all those other things that come to you in the middle of the night when you should be asleep. Right, so this is second job. I'm going to quickly, I'll, I'll quickly finish it and then I'll show you when it's done because it's not very exciting watching me put screws in, even if I am sort of under a cupboard. <laughs> not able to see anything. Right, I'm going to do it and I'll see you in a minute. After <laughs> only a year of waiting, I finally replaced the temporary wooden legs with these permanent metal legs and I can quite happily rest on this knowing, safe in the knowledge, it's never going to fall down, thank goodness. We're not going to have all the drama of basins falling off the wall or pipes breaking etc etc so that is I am I can't say it was fun to do it wasn't um, but so satisfying that it's actually done after literally a year of looking at it twice if not three or four times per day thinking why haven't I done yet I really should get that done it's so annoying what color should I do those feet should I stick with the wood should I dye stain the wood and make it match etc etc and actually all the dithering about is exhausting um, and, and quite depressing actually, but having made the decision, whatever decision you make, whatever your job is, make a decision and follow through and get it done. There's a big disparity, isn't there, between, you know, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well, which is what I grew up with, which is very much a sort of, you know, become a perfectionist, do everything absolutely perfectly, and done is better than perfect. Well, I don't like shoddy works, so I don't like things just sort of thrown together um, and that's it, it's done for the sake of doing it. But on the other hand, sometimes trying to make something absolutely perfect is completely paralysing. So you need to find somewhere that's good for you um, in between those two extremes and frankly I think that trying to be a complete perfectionist is paralyzing and it's better to just do something and then improve on it maybe later on or the next time you do it. But, so even if it's not absolutely perfect you've learned something in the process and you will have the experience for the next time you do something and it will become better and it's done. Yeah. I can't tell you how satisfying it is to now be able to start the new year knowing that this job, which has hung over me like a grey cloud, is done. Right, I have one more job which I have been thinking about on and off and I haven't done it. And this one hasn't been um, outstanding for a year, but it has been outstanding for a few months. And I suspect that there might be some of you that have something very similar to this. So let's move on to job number three. Right, job number three. So here is our final job. Okay. This curtain rail was put up in a rush last year by me um, and 
Uh, having said I don't like shoddy work, this was, I'm afraid, shoddy work uh, because I didn't check, first of all, that I had the right size roll plug and these, these are roll plugs, these are the sort of plastic uh, lining that you put inside stonework before you put the screw in to make sure you get a tight fit. So, so because I didn't have everything tidily put away, um, I couldn't find the right size raw plug, so I put in a raw plug that wasn't sufficient, but I just wanted to get them up quickly, put them up, and now, of course, the screws are starting to come out of the walls. So the first thing I'm going to do is take down the curtains, take off the curtain rods, and then I'll take the camera up higher with me, um, <laughs> up the ladder, um, and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So I've taken the curtain down, I've taken the curtain rail down and I think you can see what's happened here. This has just come loose um, and I'll show you exactly why. This is the rule plug here and it's come out immediately with the screw, which it shouldn't do because the rule plug, like it should be like a sock on your foot, if your foot is the screw, in a shoe, which would be the hole. So it gives you a nice snug, tight fit so that your foot doesn't come flying out of the wall or out of your shoe, if that makes any sense at all. So I can get this, I can get this raw plug out quite easily, I think. If I just screw this in and then just lever it, look, it comes out really easily like that, which means that's, that's not tight at all, that's loose, and that is why this has failed, it's come away from the wall um, and the whole curtain rail has dropped. Um, this is such a frustrating, <laughs> such a frustrating job to have to do because I only put this up last year and the reason it's come away so quickly like this is because I was doing it in a rush, I couldn't find the right size roll plugs and in fact I see as I've started taking them down I've just used any old screws as well, just literally to throw it up and of course it just makes more work because now I'm having to take it all down and put it back up again. Right, I've got some slightly I've got some slightly bigger roll plus here. This is a blue one. I'm gonna try this one and see if I can get that in. Okay, let's get this done right. Right, let's put this all back together. Right, and there we have it, finally. Ta-da! They are done. Um, and I have to say, <laughs> having gone from a job I didn't enjoy, this is a job I absolutely hated doing because it was such a completely and utterly thankless and stupid thing to do. And the only reason I had to do it is because I didn't do it properly in the first place. Having said that, it is now done. Um, it is off my to-do list and although I don't come into this room that much because this is the spare room It does mean that if anybody ever comes to stay I won't kind of look at them and think Ooh, That looks really terrible. How embarrassing. I am NOT embarrassed anymore. It is done <laughs> Well, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty pleased with myself um, I've completed three jobs which you've seen um, not to show you how to do those particular jobs, but just to um, just to, sh just to give you an idea of the sort of jobs I'm talking about that you just need to get rid of. And I also tried to pick three different jobs which I had put off for three completely different reasons. The first job by the windowsill was because I wasn't sure I had the right glue, so the right tools for any job you're doing. Um, and I think a part of any planning any job, you need to just work out what you need and get it and then get on with the job. 
Um, the second job I had put off because of indecision, because I couldn't make my mind up about whether I was happy with the um, grey feet or the black feet. It was all just a nonsense, really. And the problem with the second job, and you may find this in some jobs you've got around the house too, is if you've got a temporary solution in place, the immediate problem of, in my case, the sink unit falling off the wall has been dealt with. And therefore you just kind of don't bother finishing it off and and that's the sort of job that's really really annoying because it's so easy to finish um, but you just don't get on with doing it because you've got this temporary fix that sort of works in the meantime and the third job um, was a horror show um, simply because um, f when I first put those curtains up I went with the done is better than perfect approach to getting things done um, and I did the most shoddy job in the world, um, just throwing them up literally. Um, and, and it was such a complete waste of time because it then meant that I had to undo everything I'd done and then redo it. So I made twice the amount of work for myself, which was just really, really frustrating. And knowing that it was going to be really annoying, that's why I put that job off. There are many reasons that we put jobs off and we just sort of leave them there, but it's a really, um, what shall I say? I want to say destructive, that seems a bit uh, over dramatic, but okay, let's go with uh, destructive. It is destructive to your inner psyche because it takes up bandwidth of your thinking space, and also you get these sort of little negative, naggy voices telling you off all the time. Or maybe well, I don't think it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> how all these little inner voices saying ah. um, and but now that I've got those jobs done I have to tell you I feel so much better prepared for the new year not because I've done all of the outstanding jobs but because I now feel energized to do those jobs because having done one two three I now think okay why don't I just carry on and finish everything else that's outstanding and let me tell you there is one other job which I did just do at the end um, which was <laughs> fixing a toilet roll holder that was sort of flopping about, which is no longer. Um, but that's the whole point of this, that if you, if you start, um, you find, you start with an easy one and then every journey begins with a step and then having done that, you move on to something else and the next one and the next one and the next one. And you will soon find that you have the confidence and the ability and the experience to just go through your list of whatever it is that needs to be done and do it. And I think that the other thing that I've taken from this is that whenever I start something new, um, I need to plan to finish it and not just start it. Uh, because it, otherwise, you, if you put your tools down and walk away, um, somebody else will move those tools and then you'll be like, where are my tools? I can't finish this. And then it'll get left. If you start something, you have to plan to finish it. And I think, I haven't made any New Year's resolutions this year, but I think that's the New Year's resolution which is announcing itself to me. Um, so it's sort of coming to me rather than me deciding to go to it, if that makes any sense at all. Anyway, on that cheery note, I wish you all a very, very happy New Year. And I hope that now when you think about New Year's resolutions or how you're going to approach the coming year, you think about Janus, that two-faced god, sounds awful, but two faces looking forwards and back, um, and, and consider how you can actually get closure on last year, finish that, whether it's whatever, whatever it is, whether it's relationships, jobs around the house or clearing the decks, whatever it is, and then move forward with clear bandwidth, clear intentions, knowing what you're doing and planning to finish whatever you start. Happy New Year, everyone. I hope it's a productive and joyful one for you.